Abraham saw beyond. And he saw that God was faithful. And he saw that God could produce something beyond his own ability in his own life. So we, we have an awesome God. We've got a God that, that, that allows us to be tested, allows us to be pushed, allows us to be squeezed, allows us to be pressed in order to put us and to push us beyond the, 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 the ordinary that we are. Hallelujah. This, this, I've, been, I've been reading through the, through, through, through the book of Genesis and, 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 and I also began to look at the book of Hebrews at, at these men and women of God because I, I, I love how that, that God can take an ordinary individual and, and, and bring something absolutely fantastic and great out of their life. And I realize that if, if that's going to happen to me, there's something that I need to do. If, if, if I am going to be a, a, a man or a woman, hopefully I'm never a woman. <laughs> Amen. That was a complete slip of the tongue. If I'm going to be a man of God, if you're going to be a woman of God, then, then there is something that we all need that is going to pull us through in, 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 into something that, that, that we cannot, because you cannot, in and of yourself, in your own strength, in your own determination, go places that, 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 that are an impossibility. And so I was looking at, the, at, at Noah. Noah was an amazing man of God uh, where, where he was living in a, in a society that was, was basically turning against God at every, at every turn. Uh, probably could look at it almost as similar to our society today. Yes. Uh, and, and our society today is probably going to get worse. But, but Noah's uh, situation was that, that he, was, he was a righteous man. And, and what, what surprises me is, is, is the fact that, that Noah and his, his children were the only ones that actually uh, made it through, or that actually entered the ark. Uh, and, and it's interesting that, that, uh, that, uh, that Noah spent 120 years building an ark and, and, and waiting for the day when, when, when that door was going to be shut and, and the rain was going to come. 120 years. Uh, we know that God could have saved Noah and his family in many <coughs> other kinds of ways. God did not need to have Noah build a boat or build an ark in order to be saved from a flood. God could have done or had Noah do any number of other things and it would have been just as miraculous. Okay? But he chose to tell Noah to build an ark. And Noah built this ark for 120 years. Now that would be a little bit of a test. Yes? 120 years. And, and so for 120 years, Noah is building an ark. And for 120 years, there is people that are watching him build an ark. For 120 years, there is people asking him if he is nuts. For 120 years, there are people asking him, why is he building? Why is he doing this? What, what does he think he's accomplishing? Why, why do, why, why, what does he think he is? Why, why does he think that he is so special that God would, that God would tell him to build an ark? Why, why are you building an ark? And, and for 120 years, Noah told them why he was building an ark. While he was putting the planks on, while he was... While he was constructing the timbers, while he was putting all the beams in place, people were asking him and asking him, he was telling them, because there's a flood coming and this is going to be my safety. And, and, and one, of the, one of the interesting things that I, that I, was, I was reading about on one of, the, one of the commentaries I was reading was, was uh, that we can build an ark as well. Our ark is, is studying the word of God and, and obeying the word of God. That's our safety. And, 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 and because we are living in a day and age when, 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 when people are, are thinking wrong, doing wrong, and advocating for wrong. 
they're, they're actually glad when, when someone does uh, bad stuff. Amen. They celebrate evil. The truth. Right? But, but, but our, our ark of safety, our place of safety is the Word of God. And I want to I just, one of the, one of the things that, that, that I kept thinking about was, was, was the man Daniel. And, and the needle last week uh, kind of uh, gave me a, a bit of a head start on, on, on this because, because he was living when, when Israel went to, was, was taken captive to Babylon. And he was, he was actually one of the forerunners of the, of the uh, he, he was in the first batch of, of slaves or, or captives that were taken uh, to go to Babylon. And, and, and Daniel was a man of God. Daniel was a, a young man who loved God, who wanted to serve God, who was, who was determined to do whatever it took to serve God. And so Daniel was a man committed to living for God. And, and Daniel was tested in many, many ways uh, as soon as he got there. As soon as he got there, he was tested on, 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 on abstaining from, from food offered to idols. He was tested on, on all kinds of things. Uh, but his commitment to, to obeying God is what carried him through. I need you to get this. If Daniel would not have cared about the Word of God, I don't believe that he would have done the exploits and probably would have been killed for, for, what, for what was going on. But because he had a love for the Word of God, because he had a love for God, because he studied the Word of God, Daniel did things that, that were beyond human, hum, humanly possible, that were beyond even thinkable. Daniel was saved from events. Daniel was saved from circumstances that would surely have gotten him killed if it had not been for the fact that he loved God and he loved obedience to God. And, and, and beyond everything else, no matter even if his life depended on it, he decided he was going to obey God. And we live in a day and age today. We live in a, in a situation today where, where our only hope I, my belief is that our only hope is having a love for the Word of God, a dedication to the Word of God, a commitment to serving God in spite of whatever circumstance you get into. And so you've got to realize that, yes, I will be tested. Yes, I will have trials. Yes, I will have circumstances that take place in my life. But I need to develop a love. I need to pursue God. I need to have a commitment to living for God like none other. Because if, if my if my commitment to God only involves <coughs> weekly worship in the house of God, if my commitment is only asking for help when I'm in trouble, if my if my if my devotion to God is only when I feel like it, if if, if my my desire to, to to honor God is only when, when things are going the way that I that I want them to go. I mean, it's, it's easy to serve God when things are going pretty good. Amen. But when, when God, when, when, when some of those tests come on you and God squeezes you, and then you're yelling help, and God thinks that it's, it, it's mean, it means turn it up, right? <laughs> Mike Whitford's not here tonight, but uh, any, of, any of you who have, who have been... Uh, Subject to his instruments of torture, <laughs> and 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 I had the privilege of being there before most of you guys, and and he changed tactics, and I have no idea why. After after he was done with me, well, he wasn't done with me; I was done with him. <laughs> but many many times I would say, "I've had enough," and it was as if he heard, "Turn it up." <laughs> And, and, and uh, you know, but, but sometimes God is like that. We think that we've got to the place where, where we can only handle, we can't handle anymore. We've, we've reached a place where, where we can't handle anything else. And then, bang, a whole ton of things falls in your lap. 
Uh, we've got to get to a place where our commitment, our love for God, says, I am going to serve God and look at this as an opportunity <coughs> instead of, instead of a, a, a negative thing. <laughs> Praise God. You know, uh, I would, I mean, I mean, when I read the Word of God, I see so many times, over and over actually, that God wants to bless His people. That God wants to prosper His people. I, I, I love it because, because I know that at the, at the root of, at, and at the desire of, at the, the, the desire of God is that, is that, is that people do well. But that doesn't mean that God's not into testing you. It doesn't mean that God's not into to, to, to showing you what you're made of. And also using you as an example for the world. And also seeing miracles produced in your life. And bringing you and pushing you into places you never imagined possible. And I want you tonight to, to, to look at your situation. And, and, and if you're like me, the first thing you want to do is blame somebody else for your problem. Right? Amen. I'm going to be honest. I, I, I like to look at someone else. They're, the, they're my problem. I'm not going to look over on the right side of the church at all. Amen. Because we, we, we serve a God that, that is interested in, in, in producing something in you that is beyond what is humanly speaking, humanly speaking is possible. And when, when I look at Abraham and I look at, at, at Hebrews chapter 11, I look at all those men and women of faith, I realize that the one thing that they had was, was a desire to be faithful no matter what. And, and their faith, this is what I believe, their faith grew when they were faithful. I've been puzzling over this question a lot. How can I have more faith? How can I believe more than, I can, than I'm believing right now? I think I found the answer. Is be faithful. In spite of. Amen. Because you see these, these men and women of God. They had opportunities to quit. They had opportunities to. And some of them fell. Some of them failed. But guess what they did? They got back up. Amen. And kept on walking. That's right. And in, in my book, uh, in, in actually in that book, if you get back up and start walking, you haven't failed. Amen. 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 So, but, but you've got to realize that, 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 that God's looking for a certain element of faithfulness and commitment. And if you want to grow your faith, if you want to become strong in faith, it's not what's up here. It's what you've decided here. Yes. True. And, and, and what that is, is a commitment to serving and obeying God in spite of whoever did you wrong, or whatever did you wrong, or, or whatever circumstance you're in. You've got a desire, you've got a commitment to serve God and obey God in spite of. Amen. And I want you to get this in your, in your mind and in your heart tonight. Because, because sometimes we struggle and we ask God... How can, God, I, I want more faith. I want more whatever. And he says, if you want more faith, just be faithful. Obey. Yes. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. You know what? There, there is times that I would love to uh, go into the bank and, and, and because of who I am, I have to borrow a whole bunch of money. You know, and, 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 and not for God a great big gift. And, and, and have him do something for me. That would be pretty easy. Because I know what I have to do to, 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 to pay it back. But God's not interested in that. He's interested in my obedience. He's interested in my attitude. He, he looks at, at how I respond to everything. He looks at how I respond to, 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 to the way people treat me. He looks at the way I respond when, 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 when I make a slip up like I did this morning and he's and he, and, 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 and uh, like, what was I thinking? But, but the fact is that, that God cares. 
and that God is looking for us to be in a place where, where, where we are committed enough.